it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take this gorgeous Cricut party foil and turn it into your own customized confetti using your Cricut. So let's jump into it. So the first step to making your own custom confetti using Cricut Party Foil is of course to choose the designs that make the most sense for the event that you're throwing. So in this case, I'm going to be showing you how to make confetti for a bridal shower, but feel free to choose whatever shapes you think make the most sense for you. So the way that I'm going to find those shapes is I'm going to go into images and I'm going to start searching some images that would make a lot of sense. So like one of them would be a diamond ring. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind with something like party foil is that all of the design has to be attached. So for example, this first one would not work because there is this little dividing line here and down here, this piece and this piece are separate and that's not gonna make good confetti. So everything needs to be continuous. You know, circles that were attached, they would work. But the diamond ring that I found that I thought would work the best is this one because it's so simple. You can still tell what it is, but it doesn't have any complicated cutouts in the middle or anything like that. The other shape that I want to show you that I think would be really cute for a bridal shower would be just a plain diamond. Let me show you what I found, this one. And I don't know if this would be free for everyone. It says that I've purchased it at some point, so I don't know that if you guys will be able to find the same one, but I just wanna show you some examples of some things that would work. So the way that we'll have to make this diamond work is we'll have to ungroup these layers and remove this back layer. So the party foil will have to cut out the center of this diamond, but it won't be too complicated as long as we don't make it too small. The next shape that I'm gonna choose, of course, is a heart, which is always um, relevant for bridal showers. And the nice thing is about these hearts being so simple is that you can make them really, really super small and the Cricut has no problem cutting them. So before we resize everything, let's talk about adding your own custom text Next confetti because there's definitely a way that you can do it but there's also ways that you can make your life easier so for example I'm gonna add in some text and I am gonna do the word misses now I'm gonna change this font because this would not be my best choice we could definitely make this work but it still wouldn't be quite as easy so as you can see if I move these letters together I could definitely get this to be all one continuous piece but the font that I used when I was practicing using party foil was sweetness script and it worked amazingly. Um, I just love the way that it looked and it doesn't have as many loops and things like that. So it's going to be a little bit easier for the Cricut to cut. So of course you just want to take your letter spacing down to zero and then you want to ungroup everything and move it together just like any other time that you're working with a script font. One thing that I also learned when I was experimenting with this is that sometimes it's best to use all lowercase letters just because some of the fonts don't have a um, an uppercase letter that's going to connect very well to your other letters. So if I were to retype this in with a capital M, do you see how it would be a little more difficult to attach the R over here just because it's just not as easy to connect. So I liked the lowercase one better. Now, let me caution you when it comes to adding your own text to confetti, it can get a little bit complex. So for example, let's type in bride without a capital B. And this particular font, Sweetness Script, this would not really be possible because the only way to connect the R to this B would be to drag it all the way over and it would look pretty funky. So I just want to caution you on using things that are going to make your life harder or picking fonts that are super, super thin. Like you saw when I originally opened up my text box, I had Hello Script chosen but look how thin that is. I mean, it's definitely doable, but it's just not going to be as easy. So I suggest that you make or you choose fonts and um, words that are going to be a little bit easier. So like, for example, if you were getting married and your name was Alex, like mine is, I could actually probably cut my name out of it because it's only four letters. Whereas if you have a bride that has a longer name, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. So anyway, now that I've chosen all my shapes, let's talk about sizing the party foil, or excuse me, the shapes, so that the party, the party foil can still cut them out easily, but they're also gonna look cute as confetti. So I found for this heart that I could actually make it as small as a quarter of an inch and the Cricut still cut it beautifully. But another thing that I'm going to do is duplicate it and I'm going to add multiple sizes of this heart only because I always think that when you have confetti, the variety of shapes and textures is just going to make it look even more interesting. So a heart is a really easy one that you can make in a ton of different sizes so that it just looks really different. Then I'm going to resize this ring and I'm going to make it, 
about half an inch tall. Again, since this is a really um, simple shape, I think that this is gonna be no problem for the Cricut. But then let's duplicate it and also make it a little bit bigger so that it's nice and recognizable. And then for this diamond, since it does have some cutouts in the center of it, I am not gonna make it any smaller than about half an inch tall. Um, in fact, I think that might even be too small. So let's try a quarter of an inch high which is going to make it about an inch wide. So I think that's going to be just perfect. And then for this misses, um, the smallest I found that I could make the text was about half an inch high because it still makes it about an inch wide. These should all be reasonable um, shapes to cut out of the party foil. But something else to keep in mind when you're making confetti is that probably not every single shape is going to make it out. So you're probably going to have to throw a few pieces away just because as you're peeling it off the mat, not everything may make it. So make sure that you add enough to your mat that you are prepared for that. Click and drag a square around everything and duplicate it a few times just to make sure that we fill up our mat with lots of shapes. And then I'm gonna save it. Actually, before I save it, I have one more thing to do. I'm going to click and drag a box around everything again. And in the color box, I'm gonna change everything to black just because I'm gonna cut everything on the same color of party foil. I definitely recommend that you do a variety of colors and textures and things like that. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna cut it out of one color. So now I'm going to save it and I'm going to show you how to make your life a little bit easier when we go to the next screen. So as you can see, I've duplicated it a few times, but that ends up creating a lot of layers over here in Design Space and that can make your project kind of take a long time to load. So if you go to the Make It screen, something that's going to make your life a lot easier is to use the project copies over here on the left and that is going to make three times as much as the original layers that I um, um, had on my mat so you can do it I mean even if you wanted to do it five times the original and apply it you can fill up your mat really easily this way without creating three gazillion layers <laughs> and I really like that approach so keep the project copies in mind for things like this so once you're ready, then you're going to go to continue. And once your machine connects, you can select your cut setting. I'm using a Cricut maker and on my maker, what worked best for me was to go to browse all materials and select the party foil setting. And then I actually did increase the pressure though to more pressure. So something you want to keep in mind when you're working with this material is that party foil is essentially um, holographic iron on or HTV without the adhesive backing on it. So it still has that really beautiful holographic film, but it can kind of cut into some funky layers if you don't cut it all the way through. So if you're in doubt, I always suggest using a little bit more pressure with this kind of film just to make your life a little bit easier. So now that we have everything all ready, let's hop over to my Cricut and I'll show you how to cut all of this party foil. So once you know how much party foil you need, I suggest cutting that off of your roll using a paper trimmer. That way you keep your lines nice and straight and you don't waste any material. So we're going to set this aside and go ahead and apply the party foil to our green mat. I suggest using at least a green mat so that it has a really good grip on the material. And you want to really make sure that your material is well stuck to the mat. You don't want any areas of the foil to not be fully adhered because since you're cutting something so small and detailed, the sticking to the mat is really, really important. And in fact, I'm even going to use a little bit of painter's tape and reinforce this top line since it's going to be cutting so close to the top just like this and the nice thing about using painters tape is that even if my Cricut happens to cut through it there's not going to be any issue with that because the painters tape is so thin that it doesn't matter so once you're well stuck down to the mat and in fact let's do the bottom too just in case then we'll go ahead and put this mat in our machine and cut our party foil
So one really important tip for after you cut something as small and as finely detailed as party foil, you wanna be sure to remove your fine point blade and be sure to clean it off by punching it through a ball of aluminum foil. If you forget to do this, there can be pieces of the material attached to the bottom of your blade and it can cause your other cuts in the future to not be as clean. So I just keep the same ball of aluminum foil and I literally just use the button at the top of the blade and just punch it through. And this will not sharpen your blade like some people will tell you it will, but it does help clean off any debris without you having to run your fingers along the blade and risk cutting yourself. So let me move my Cricut out of the way and let's talk about how to finish up this party foil project. So as you can see, as I was cutting my party foil, some of the pieces ended up snagging a little bit and causing a little bit of lifting around the party foil. So that's not too big of a deal because this entire mat is covered with pieces that I wanna use for confetti. So I still have plenty to go around. You just wanna be cautious of that and you may wanna consider taping all the way around if you're having problems like this yourself. So next I'm gonna remove my painter's tape and I'm gonna slowly and carefully peel my party foil off of my mat and hopefully we're gonna preserve as many pieces as we can. And of course you wanna have something like a little cup or a jar to make sure that you have a place to hold everything. Another really helpful tip is to have something like a lint roller nearby so that as you get a ton of these little pieces all over the place, it's a nice and easy cleanup. So I'm just gonna gently pull these off. And even though we used more pressure, it is possible that you may have to, um, you may have to pull the pieces off a little bit of the party foil even still. Remember when I told you guys it takes a lot of volume to make your own confetti? This is an eight inch piece of party foil and look how many pieces that it cut. But if I wanted to make a ton of confetti, I'd still have a lot more to go. So next I'm gonna search on the party foil piece left over and see if there's anything that came up from the mat. And of course, lots of little pieces did, especially the text elements. I've noticed these guys get stuck in the party foil more than anything else. So you just wanna try to carefully remove them if you can. And you may end up losing them, but if you're really gentle, you might be able to save them. So once you have everything removed from your foil, let's talk about how to easily remove these pieces from your mat. So one thing that I did learn is that party foils coloring does come off somewhat if you scrape it too hard with a hook or a scraper or anything like that. So you wanna be sure to be nice and gentle. I'm just gonna use my Cricut spatula and just easily pop off these little pieces. And I might even have to use my tweezers in some cases as well. Another strategy that you can use for getting pieces off of your mat is to actually bend it backwards like this. And that way it'll lift the edges of the pieces that are curled and you can easily pull them off of your mat. So once you get your party foil off of the mat, there you have some super cute confetti. Now keep in mind that you wanna mix different things in with this confetti to make it a little bit more visually interesting and just so that you don't have to cut so much party foil. So a couple of ideas that I had for things to mix into it would be like rhinestones that you get from the craft store, or you could even go as small as rhinestones that you would use for like rhinestone projects that are super tiny. You can get lots of them off of Amazon. Um, some other things you could mix with it would be like confetti cut out of glitter cardstock so that you get a little bit of a variety of texture there. Um, you could also vary the colors and textures of party foil because some of the party foil is just a plain foil look. Not all of it is this holographic sparkle. So even adding multiple colors of that would add some texture. So I hope that this makes your next party or event super special with custom confetti. If you make anything using my tutorials, whether it's custom confetti or something else, please use the hashtag DIY Alex if you decide to share it out on Instagram, because I love to see what you guys are making and learning about.
And if we haven't already connected on social media, I would love to get to know you. So please find me at DIY Alex Vanover on all major social platforms. I'll also put direct links down in the description of this video. So it's super easy to get connected. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.